hello guys welcome to the session what we'll be doing is uh, this particular session we will be going through efk okay so as part of this particular session uh we will try to deploy aks cluster and then thereafter uh, we'll understand what is efk and we'll go through uh, each component what exactly it is and then we'll uh, go and uh, uh, practice session itself okay then thereafter what we will be doing is uh, we will be uh, having an interactive question and answer session we will um, if you have any questions right i should be able to sort it out okay so now let us go and uh, create a uh, aks cluster so go to azure kubernetes cluster click on here new resource group We'll select a minimal uh, minimal number of uh, virtual machine uh, minimal number of uh, nodes okay um, the default setting let it be there whatever it is there so you are we are happy with that okay let us click on yeah validation has been passed let us create it okay so it will take uh, uh, some seven to eight minutes so let it happen in the background in the meantime we will uh, complete our theory part of it okay so yeah, so as you go, our EFK, right? So if you see here, EFK stand for E stands for in that one elastic search, F stand for a fluent D, okay, key stand for a K stand for a Kibana. Okay. So you may ask what are all these uh, each respective resources? How it is relevant in uh, our any Kubernetes cluster? Okay. So E stands for a uh, elastic search. Okay, it is a, a a database. Okay, no SQL database, meaning it, you can unstructured data. You can send it across to the uh, this particular database. It will it it need not have a, any proper structured query language, structured tables. Whatever data you wanted, you can uh, push it to this particular no SQL database. <coughs> so in this EFK stack. What is the use of Elasticsearch is to store all the logs, okay? So whatever the logs, it has been pushed by Fluent, Fluent Bit, right? All the things, it will be stored in this particular database. That is the main work in this particular uh, uh, monitoring solution, okay? So the next bit is a Fluent D, Fluent Bit, okay, or a Fluent D. It is a logging and metric processor. Okay, so what it does is, it is uh, you can think of it as a a courier guy or a postman. Okay, it picks picks up the data. Okay, from one place and uh, push uh, delivers it to the other place. Okay, so here picking up of a, a material or a data is nothing but the logs. Okay, and this is the responsibility of Fluent D to pick the logs which we say pick those but and push us it to our elastic search okay that is what fluent d uh, does the work it's a, just a, a courier guy okay so it is very fast it's a lightweight and it's highly scalable okay if you have a thousands of uh, virtual machine or thousands of application it will do its bit very uh, very efficiently okay it's a performance oriented uh, design again this particular software it is also cncf pro uh, product okay open source product you need not pay for it okay <coughs> kibana so when we uh, uh, kibana is a software tool it's a, a front end okay uh, in the front end what you should be able to do is so the logs data it has been picked up by the courier guy that is fluent D, and pushed to the database called as Elasticsearch, right? So obviously you wanted to find it out, all the logs and all, right? So whatever the logs it has been uh, uh, pushed pushed into the uh, Elasticsearch, right? Those all the things you wanted to view it, right? For that, you re we require a one front-end software. That is what our Kibana is, okay? Kibana is a front-end 
which fronts the database that is in, in our case elastic search okay uh, with using that you can uh, search the predated data as well okay say one month back what has happened those all the data you can check it out you can put a uh, uh, kql Q, kubana query language uh, you can uh, with that one you can do a search queries okay so there are many advantages of kibana okay so you can think of it as a, a front end which shows our logs which is stored in our database okay so if i uh, take our example right so in our case what we have is a eks cluster okay so inside the eks cluster what we'll be deploying is kibana application elastic search okay our data of elastic search is stores in a kubernetes persistent data okay you can you can ask me what is persistent volume and all right persistent data right so persistent data is a data even if this particular pod in kubernetes goes down right if the data is intact or persisted meaning so it has kept aside right so you can spin up another uh, elastic search pod and the same persistent data you can use it so data won't be lost okay so in kubernetes how we do it using persistent volume and persistent volume claim okay using that we configure elastic search okay so now we have a fluent d okay so fluent d is a as i said it's a courier guy right so one one area one one courier courier guy will be there right so in a, and if i take an analogy the courier guy is responsible to uh, drop to a certain area right a certain city right one person can do only delivery of that particular area right similarly what we do is in kubernetes world all the workloads is deployed on a node right so that inside the node all the pods runs up we run our all the spring boot application or mysql database inside our node our kubernetes node okay so the courier guy uh, in order to pick the logs right it is basically our node becomes a single place right so from where our fluent d has to pick all the logs right so what we do here is as part of this EFK, efk architecture what we do we install fluent d as a daemon set okay so daemon set is a uh, in kubernetes world one time if you wanted to install few of the stuff on the particular node right you go and install it as a daemon set okay so if we have a 10 virtual 10 nodes kubernetes worker node then there will be a 10 fluent d installation we need to do okay so that is what it is the uh, requirement for our this year efk architecture okay so in our example what we will be doing is we will be installing a mysql database in previous sessions we have uh, deployed our uh, uh, backend and the database right the same application we will be extending it and uh, trying to deploy it on our node okay rather than uh, one node we sorry two nodes we will be doing a one node itself okay so how we do it uh, we will install mysql database inside the node okay that logs everything inside our node itself so what fluentd does is <coughs> it picks all these data okay this data and pushes into elastic search that is the only work of our fluentd okay picks the pick the data pushes it to a database if you have another uh, node uh, whatever the spring boot application if we push us a, a few of the logs that all the logs it will be picked up by this fluent d okay and push us into our elastic search <coughs> database in this session what we will be doing is we will be using a uh, aks cluster azure kubernetes service overall this installation is all across any kubernetes service okay it can be your uh, eks or gke or oke okay, any kubernetes flavor even in the open shift you can run the same setup okay uh, now in order to do a practice session right what we require is azure account uh, azure subscription you should have we should have a aks kubernetes cluster uh, sorry azure kubernetes service is installed okay if you have practiced the previous uh, 
uh, backend and MySQL databases uh, as a pod running as a pod, right? That will obviously will help. Okay. So now what we will be doing is we will be deploying a EFK cluster, EFK into our AKS cluster. This we will try it now. Okay. So let us go and check it out. So if you could see here, our AKS cluster has been deployed. So let us go inside that. Okay. So if you see here, in order to connect to our Kubernetes cluster, we will select this bit. We will we will connect to our subscription that has been connected. Now we will connect to our our AKS cluster. Okay. I'll try to use admin credentials. For that, you need to append this bit. Okay. So I wanted to overwrite it. I had the same the same name that is the reason it is asking to override okay so it has overridden now we have connected to our aks cluster okay so if you could see here we have only one agent mole okay so let us check it check it out okay hit node minus oh five okay so if you see this is our single aks node pool our AKS node it is running okay on this particular IP address okay so what we will do is now our AKS cluster is up and running so as a part of our this deployment first what we will do is we will deploy a we'll deploy this YAML file okay these are all things we will be doing it as part of this particular exercise okay I will go through one of each one by one okay so first what we will be doing is we need to deploy our namespace okay we are calling this namespace as efk log okay so i'm already in that particular folder okay so what i will do is i will run i will say kubectl apply minus f01 okay i'll enter this so if you see our namespace it has been created okay if i say go and check it out Okay, so if you would be able to see 11 seconds ago our namespace it has been created okay the sec once the first step is done so second step what we will do is we will install our uh, elastic search service okay service is the play service is the one which funds our all our application okay so in this case elastic search so what we are giving is giving a name as this inside the name says this it has to create okay the port it has to access is 9200 okay target port is a db a particular database it has to uh, target port is a db and there are a select selector uh, criteria it has been given okay now let us go and run this bit 02 So if you wanted to check it, uh, the service we have added it. So I will say, if you see our Elasticsearch service, it has been added now. Okay. So next step is we have to create our uh, stateful set. Okay. Before st uh, uh, creation of a stateful set, uh, stateful set okay we need to create a authentication mechanism right we should have a our own service account okay so we will create a service account then we will have a our cluster role which will give a access to kubernetes resource uh, services namespace and uh, uh, endpoints it will give you a get access okay for logging purposes okay and then thereafter it will do a cluster role binding cluster role binding our uh, uh, role whatever we have created it against our service account we will map it okay so the service account which we have created at the top this service account will be having a access to our role that is this role okay inside this particular namespace that is what we have written it over here cluster role binding okay then thereafter we would require a 
a stateful set okay which will hold our uh, our data right so here if you see our we are picking it up our uh, elastic search okay from this particular image okay uh, this is our uh, deployment okay our uh, elastic search uh, stateful set okay so now let us go and it has its own uh, memory and cpu uh, so those all the details we have mentioned it over here okay so let us go and run this particular stateful set and as well as along with our service account and cluster role and role binding creation okay so the simple task 03 okay elastic search set, stateful set okay if you see all these four items it got created okay so if i say get all okay if you could could see our pod elastic search logging it is initializing it so it may take couple of uh, uh, man, 30 to 40 second more okay our uh, service is up and running our stateful set is this word okay so there are two record or uh, two pods it has to bring it up if you see our pods are up and running okay the ready state is our stateful set is both the uh, it will set is up and running okay so now this one is completed so next one is our fluent d okay uh, the fluent d uh, there is a configuration is present so this configuration what we require the containers input of this uh, documentation uh, configuration what we are doing here is we are asking fluent d to pick this particular path what all the logs is present right that log it has to push it to our elastic search okay that is what this configuration uh, says which uh, which we have kept it in a config map okay then the as i explained earlier a daemon set we we need to create it similarly here also we are uh, creating the same service uh, account and a cluster role okay uh, cluster binding is to map account with our cluster role okay so at the bottom part if you could see our daemon set we are configuring it okay this daemon set uh, if you remember it is required for required to pick the all the logs from that particular node and push it to elastic search okay so for that purpose our uh, fluent d daemon set we are configuring it okay let us go and deploy this bit. Yes. 304 config map. Yeah. And then 05 fluent D. Okay, so fluent D it has been configured. Uh, next one is uh, our Kibana deployment. Okay. So Kibana deployment is, is our front end which connects to our elastic search. Okay, so if you see, we are setting a elastic search post details here. This is our service of uh, elastic uh, search. Okay, and it is running on a 9200. Okay, so these details we, we are passing to our Kibana. Okay, then thereafter we are configuring our uh, Kibana as a type load balancer so that we can access it over the internet okay these two things if we run it our application should be when I mean, our efk installation should be completed okay so let us go and see so if you see everything it has been done okay so now what we will do is we will check out all the configuration okay so if you see our elastic search is up and running our demo set is, is up and running okay our kibana is still container creating so let us give us another 10 second okay so elastic search our kibana logging is running on this particular external ip okay it's running on a load balancer if, as you could see our load balancer ip address is this but okay so our uh, let us run it again and check it out our kibana is up and running 
yeah so if you see our kibana logging is up and running so now let us go and access this particular ip address kibana 060 Service it is listening on a 5601 okay fine Okay, so if you see this is our kibana okay uh which just now we have installed it okay with this one our uh, efk installation it has been done okay so let us click on explore on my own then as a first step let us discover it so for each of the namespace right in actual project we will define an index pattern differently okay for a per namespaces we try to do this but okay but here uh, we are going for a star everything in that okay uh the name yeah timestamp should be fine create an index pattern so what it does is i have given a wild card start whatever it has been pushing it over here it has to go and sit in this particular index okay so let us go to our uh, discover page the kibana okay so so if you see suddenly all the logging mechanism right whatever the logs it has been added just now we have added uh, efk log namespace and all right everything it is printed here okay so if you wanted to check the source right on a per namespace level okay so if you wanted to do that Kubernetes or pod level also you can do that okay so if you see it has efk log what in cube system what all the logs it has been displayed that it shows okay so efk log all these details it has been uh, you can check it by per namespaces per namespaces what all the logs it has been added okay so i will say last uh, five minutes ago okay i am interested in uh, checking only in the last five minutes ago. okay i'll update it uh, let, let, it's still running okay so if you could see last 12.23 is uh, my current timestamp. So 12.18, what all logs it has been pushed, right? That you should be able to see. Okay. So here, uh, as of now, we have installed our Kubernetes cluster. We have installed our EFK stack on our Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So as a next step, right, what we wanted to do is we need to, we wanted to find out, uh, I mean, how exactly our uh, application the backend and mysql application we install on kubernetes cluster those logging how exactly it will happen okay so as part of our next next activity what we will do is we'll deploy a backend application as well as mysql application into our aks cluster okay so then thereafter we will try to access our logs so in order to log into our uh, cluster right our uh, backend application we had yeah we had uh, create in the previous sessions we have created a helm charts for that right so we will go inside that let me copy this come back to here okay so we have a mysql and a backend okay let us go and install a mysql Okay, so now uh, these all the our application, right? It has to be deployed on a. I mean, ideally we go and deploy it in a namespace. What is namespace? It is namespace is a logical separation. Okay, you can think of it as a mini Kubernetes it's, uh, itself inside a Kubernetes. Okay, so let us go and create a one namespace for our uh, application. Or backend and uh, MySQL database. Okay. Cre uh, create QCTL create NS stand for a namespace. Okay. Uh, namespace. I will say what is today date? First uh, July. Okay. I will say first July. 
फर्स्ट अंडर स्कोर जुलाई ओके इट द नेम इज वैलिड इट हाइफन आई कैन यूज हाइफन ओके सो आवर नेम स्पेस हैज बीन क्रिएटेड सो लेट अस गो एंड चेक इट आउट क्यूब सिटी एल गेट एन एस इफ यू सी फर्स्ट जुलाई इट हैज बीन डिप्लॉयड ऑन अ थर्टी सेकेंड वन थ्री सेकेंड एगो थर्टीन सेकेंड एगो ओके so now what we will be doing what we will be doing is we will be installing our uh, our helm charts what it has been created okay i'll say helm ls i wanted to install do just a helm ls nothing is there okay now we wanted to install this on this particular namespace all our backend and a mysql application okay So for that, I will say install the name what we are giving SQL. Okay, I will say dot. Okay, this will install already existing MySQL chart inside our Kubernetes cluster. So it says it has been deployed. Okay, so you check here. It says it has been deployed. Okay, how do you check? Helm ls minus n stand for a namespace. And our namespace name, okay, it has been deployed. So if you wanted to check it, I will say qctl get the pod and our namespace we need to append it. So if you see, no resources found in this particular namespace. Okay, let us go and install it. Uh, again, nothing has been deployed. Ideally, it should have deployed. Versus first July. First July, been up and running. Okay. What did I mistake it? Why I have missed it? So, but during installation, it went in properly. Okay, our database is up and running. Okay, if I wanted to check all, I should be able to see our MySQL pod, MySQL service, deployment and replica set is up and running. Okay, so now what we will do is the next bit that is installing our backend. Okay, so backend is right here. I do this. Now what we will we'll go and install this particular backend application inside our namespace. Okay, it has been deployed. See here, our uh, employee application is creating now. Okay, so let us give a couple of seconds, and then. Uh, it should be able to come up in a startup state okay so if i go back to our kibana right that is our front end okay so if i do refresh here to me all the data if you see here first july and all in the namespace it is showing us Uh, if I you wanted to see the data, right? So our MySQL database, whatever the logging it is happening in the MySQL database, everything it is visible. Okay, so you wanted to see per namespaces, right? So I will go here. The message add the message. Here. Okay, so you can see timestamp and a message, and even the namespace. Namespace you wanted. this space what i will do is I, we will add a filter so uh, 
Test speed. Touch. Team speed. Okay. okay, now you can see all our application resides in our all our application uh, resides in our uh, namespace called as first July, right? So our uh, employee database, okay, our uh, employee pod and MySQL database, it is running there itself. So if you see here, uh, these are all related to. Let us add a pod as well here. Okay. Our pod name. If I add a pod name, you can see at the end pod. You should be able to see that the pod name is which pod it is. So if you see MySQL pod, these are all the details it has been, the logs it has been added. So if you wanted to see last say 15 minutes back okay 15 minutes back whatever it was there it will show it to us in this way right so you can check all the logs okay whatever the log this particular pod it has been pushing right so it's if i go back here right so if you wanted to check the logs for this but okay i will say qctl logs minus f and on our namespace okay so all these things whatever the uh, inside the kubernetes pod right whatever it has been logged all those things you can see it here okay so if you see starting our servlet engine okay uh, entry from mysql is we started okay started spring boot application this is our uh, uh, spring boot application right so here uh, you should be able to see whatever the logs it was uh, uh, added right here those all the logs it is present in our elastic search and in the front end you can see it okay uh, in this way what we do is uh, you can make sure that all the logging whatever it's happening right you can see it. now let us go and add a few data we'll say get a pod uh instead of we need a service service for our first july okay so if you see our employee application we have made it as a load balancer so that we can access it over the internet okay so if you wanted to access it So if you see empty bracket meaning nothing is there okay so now what i will do is using postman will push few data postman is a tool which picks a data from our side and it which makes a api call okay i'll say july okay First to July, right? From first to July, I'll put. So I will send it. You see, first record it has been inserted. If I go and do a refresh, you'll see the record it has been added. Same thing. If I go and check here, say last one minute. Okay, I will apply this. If you see our last one minute. This is the entry command it has done, right? Uh, if you Kubernetes, all the data is uh, insert into employee stable. Okay, all this uh, in the log, whatever we see here, right? Whatever we are seeing here, insert into employee stable, right? Uh, or uh, initialize thing, but initialize dispatcher servlet okay so initialize dispatcher servlet okay. whatever we are able to see it here 
that is the same thing you can see it in our uh, kubernetes sorry in our kibana okay so if you wanted to add an, again another filter okay so uh, there are multiple ways you can do it you can click on here you wanted to have a pod name as well okay uh, you can see filter this add a filter this plus symbol is there right you click on that it will add a filter okay so if last one minute there is no data i will say last 10 minutes i will say update our pod you can drill it down last 10 minutes whatever the logging it has been happened which is available on the kibana right you can see everything so try for a triaging or any issue occurs in our pod right you can clearly see it over here okay so let us uh, what we do is let us add another few data okay i'll say demo I'll send it. If I do a refresh, I've added 1230. Couple of seconds, it takes more time. Okay, if you see 1236, it has added. Sometimes there will be a lag. Okay, so ideally, a couple of seconds because the Fluent D has to push the data. Okay, so I will say last one. Update it two minutes. Okay, so our Fluent D has to pick the data, push to Elasticsearch, then Kibana should query that Elasticsearch. It has to happen in a fraction of a second. This is what you see it probably came right. So now our application, uh, now we have seen how exactly it has been deployed, right? So the same, but if you wanted to check, is there any activity, any logging it has happened on the MySQL as well, that also you can check it. So currently, if you could see last 10 minutes, there's no MySQL database activity. Okay? Uh, in this way, our application, whatever we have deployed it, over the internet, right? So those are all the things you can view it, even in using Postman, same thing. Well, host. Okay, both the record exists. Okay. So now what we will do is, uh, we have to bring it down, all this, uh, this, the way we have installed it, right? We will try to uninstall it again, okay? So for that, what we will do is, uh, first thing is our applications, what we have deployed, okay? So if you wanted to uninstall now, okay? So what you could do is, go back, L, LS. Okay, there are two charts are present, MySQL and backend. So we will, one by one, we will uninstall it, uninstall. Okay, we first what we will do is, install the backend. Our, uh, our backend has been uninstalled. Okay, we will uninstall MySQL as well. MySQL has been uninstalled. If you wanted to check it, check it over here. None of the resources present it has been backed off. Okay, so now if you wanted. Uh, Our EKS cluster, right? When uh, EFK inside our EKS cluster, we have installed our EFK stack. That also we wanted to uninstall. So how do you do that? All the YAML files are present. Earlier, what I did was one by one we have tried to install it, right? The uh, one by one uh, details we have tried to install it. So now what we will do is using apply command we did it. Now Okay, qctl minus f dot is enter it. 
it should be it should be able to delete everything so name face it has been deleted one by one it is deleting it service uh, it is currently trying to delete it give a moment ideally these deployments as well we try to do it via our uh, helm charts probably uh, in tomorrow session uh, if time permits i will do that so i will what i will say is kubectl get pod thing is present i will say get the ns okay first july is exists there in the sky. get all nothing is that's okay we don't want this first july namespace as well knock it off okay delete ns okay my bad pressed wrongly okay so it has been deleted okay so now what we will do is we will go and delete off in order to save the cost we will delete our aks cluster click on here okay in the meantime what i will do is uh, i will start up our uh, question and answer session if anyone has any question they can join here so let's just check it out yeah the install yeah uh i've corrected it thank you for uh, not noticing it so interactive session i will start it down start it now if anyone is interested they can join it okay i will end this uh, 